Gosh, got him. That was cool. That was cool. Oh my gosh, just flipped to a random white spot. Oh, we got him. Let him take me all around. I'll let you be in control here for a second, buddy. How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna teach you guys how to catch bedfish that you can't actually see by flipping to what's called the white spots. Oh, ha ha. To catch big old springtime bass just like this one. My name is Tyler Anderson, and let's jump into it. What's going on everybody and welcome back to Mystery Tackle Box the YouTube channel. My name is Tyler Anderson and I run the YouTube channel and social media called Tyler's Real Fishing. And my goal on my channel and basically anywhere that I make content is to help you guys as anglers catch more fish and become better anglers. And so if you were into that kind of thing, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and my channel TRF. I'll have it linked below in the video description. Now Mystery Tackle Box brings me on this channel to teach you guys about certain specific topics. And the topic they entrusted me with today was bed fishing. But you know what? Bed fishing, sight fishing, whatever you want to call it, is such a broad topic that I wanted to bring it down for a certain situation and that is your clear water to semi clear water but conditions that don't allow bed fishing or sight fishing very possible. Now at this point I'm sure a few of you are looking at me right now if you're new to bass fishing and you're thinking what the heck is bed fishing? What is sight fishing? What does that even mean? I like to say on my channel that the bass's life cycle revolves around three main things. Eating, not being eaten, and mating. In that third phase, mating is called the spawn. The spawn is when a male bass and a female bass will get together, they will go up shallow, and they will fan away the bottom, whether it's you know clay or mud or grass, and they will form a circular-ish, not always a circle, sometimes an oval, sometimes a very weirdly shaped bed, and they will lay their eggs and the fish sperm, I guess you could call it, on that area. During this time, both the male and the female bass are very defensive, and of course, when I say sight fishing, you can usually see them with your eyes. Now, I'm not gonna go a whole lot into uh, the, the intricacies of how to tell if a bass is catchable. There are tons of videos, even on my channel, about bed fishing in that intricate way. I'm just gonna talk about the situation of today's fishing adventure. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about the ethics of bed fishing. A lot of people out there I've seen comment that bed fishing is immoral because the bass are mating. Why do you catch them in that process? It could hurt the future fishery population if you're catching them and bluegill come in and eat their eggs. I can see that argument, but also a lot of bass spawn deeper and endure your water than we can even see. And so if you are fishing anywhere in the south, especially from January until May, and anywhere in the north from April until July, you're gonna be catching bedding fish if you're beating the bank, whether you know it or not. So in my opinion, as long as I get the fish back on the bed to protect their nest and make future generations very, very quickly after catching them, I have no problem bed fishing. So in that intro, I talked about the white spot. The white spot is that cleared away section on the bottom where the fish has made their bed. In an ideal world, you're gonna be able to see a perfectly clear water, a nice circular bed with two bass laying on it, and not a single other angler has touched those areas. And that is just not the truth for most cases, especially public like the public ponds. People fish in the spring like there's no tomorrow. Everybody and their dog is out there. And so it is possible that you're fishing for fish that have already seen someone else's lures and or you can't actually see exactly where they are. So fishing down the bank might work during certain times of the year, but in this time of the year, they're gonna be on those certain little areas called beds. And that is the best chance for you to catch some big bass. And so in this situation, we have really clear water, which lends itself to the possibility, if you have no wind of being able to sight fish for those fish, I'm sure I'm gonna have a sight fishing video on my channel this year. But in today's adventure, we have quite a bit of wind and a lot of clouds. Clouds and wind are two things that you do not want when you are sight fishing. And so what I'm gonna be doing in today's video and showing you guys tons of fish catches from is flipping my Texas rigged weightless six inch. This is the striking Ocho. I call it a Cinco. I call a lot of things by the brand name. This is a Texas rig Cinco on a, uh, on a four out flipping hook, 20 pound fluorocarbon, a seven four heavy rod. You don't have to throw it on a heavy rod. I just love this rod right here, it's 7.4 heavy. And then any reel of choice right here, I have a, uh, I believe it's a 7, 8, 3 to 1, fast gear ratio. And what you're gonna see here in a second when I hop on the front deck is I'm going to be flipping and making short roll casts to these white areas that I see in the hopes that those could be bass's beds. Now, two things to understand about these things that I'm gonna call white circles in this video. They're not always going to be beds and not every single bass is going to bed 
inside one of those white circles. In fisheries all around the country, you're gonna find situations, especially for smallmouth bass, where the area around is all white and then the bed itself is black. And even in some largemouth fisheries, uh, the bed itself is not gonna be a total white color. It might blend very closely in with the rest of the, of the surrounding areas. Sometimes bass are gonna spawn on, uh, on stumps. But like I said, today's situation is very niche. It is clear water, windy, but you have a bottom composition that lends itself to make white little areas. And so I'm gonna be flipping and casting to every Every single one in the hopes that I see a fish move off of one that I can see kind of through the ripple in the water from the wind or I just catch the fish without even sight fishing so technically I'm bed fishing but without actually seeing the fish I hope that made sense to you guys I'm kind of sick of talking about it so let's go on the front deck and show you guys a few fish catches doing exactly what I'm doing today and of course how you can replicate it for yourself I see another white spot over there it kind of looks like it could have a fish so, gonna make a long flip. Long flip it flip. No fish on that cast. Doesn't mean there's not one, but just didn't get them on the long cast. Right here we got a windy white spot that I saw a fish on earlier, but now we got a ripple and I can't, can't really see what's down there. So, always keep your eyes peeled though. I'm always looking at the water in case that wind dies down and I can see the fish. But I'm just gonna make five or six flips at this white spot. See if this fish is still there. Really just feeling for the bite. You could call this sight fishing. I'm really just using my sight to find a good looking area, just like you use your sight to find a, a lay down or a lily pad. I'm just finding a white spot and fishing it a few times. I have found one. Rare. This thing is like shallow as heck. I see the fish doing a little circle here. I made a cast at this guy from far away, didn't bite. So this is one of those guys that's a little smarter. Oh wow, that's, that's the male. I, I did not even see this fish. Oh, the female's still in there. We are gonna grab, ouch, ouch, ouch. I'm gonna grab the male here, put him in the live well for just a second so we can get that female to bite, didn't even know this guy was in there, he's so small. That was crazy. I literally saw that female right there, that bigger bass, advance towards my Cinco. And I set the hook when I felt a bite and I guess it wasn't even her, it was the male. Oh, but she's a gauna. I'm about to catch her. I'm about to absolutely put the smack down on her face. Oh yeah, hello. Hello, Missy. Don't worry, we'll catch you. We'll get you and your hubby, or your boyfriend, whatever you're feeling. We'll get you back on that bed. Well, now there's, now there's two baths on the bed. Where'd that guy come from? Are they monogamous? They must be monogamous. Look at that. Here's fish too. Get in here. Yes, that's the female that I was looking at. And there's one more male. Better fish right there. I'd say that goes almost three pounds. And there's one more fish. We got a we got a 21st century relationship up in here. All right, well, maybe that third bass was just kind of the boyfriend that hangs around. Uh-oh, and he got it. <laughs> Beautiful looking fish, folks. Jeez. We tucked ourselves back in a little pocket where I could actually see the fish. Thought I'd end the video on a really cool looking bed fish. Don't get me in the grass, buddy. Don't get me in the grass. <clears throat> well, I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Of course, my goal on my channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers. And that's what I love coming over here to this channel to teach you guys how to do as well. So, so if you want to catch fish like this, try the pitching around to the beddy areas, or as I, as I called them earlier, the white spots. Um, and you're going to find some good springtime success. So if you all are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button because if you're not subscribed, you're missing out on content like this. We'll see you next time here on the channel.